Welcome back to the channel YouTube. It's Universal Fragrances here, and I have a very special subscriber requested episode. Now, I do feel like I'm pretty qualified to talk about this when I moved down to Miami uh, in my later teen years after graduating high school. I worked at a fine tobacco shop, and perhaps it was just ignorance or age at that time, but I was very unaware of some of the gifts that were being bestowed on me by some of the shop patrons and even the owner himself. I knew it was special back then, but I was able to smoke all sorts of rare pre-embargo Cuban cigars, Cohiba Bahiques, the Edition Limitada 2004, um, just countless cigars that are not really available anymore. And if you can find them, they're you know hundreds and possibly even thousands of dollars for even just one cigar. That is correct. Um, the Cuban market in the last three years especially has just gone through the roof and I really wanted to include, include on this list some Cuban cigars, but I want to make sure people viewing this video should be able to find anything on this list with some relative ease. Um, some will be a little bit more difficult than others, but as far as I know, none of this stuff is out of stock or, or specially allocated. Um, some of it is limited, however, so just keep that in mind when I put this list together. There's a lot of things I could have put in drink-wise and cigar-wise that would be uh, considered a little bit more bougie. Than this, um, you know, you talk about like Pappy Van Winkle bourbon and all these other things that people overpay for. I'll let you in on a little secret. I did a tasting with Pappy Van Winkle bourbon and it was a blind tasting with a couple people and this was years and years and years ago. And uh, Wild Turkey Wear Breed for $60 won the tasting over some bottles that were $1,000. So keep that in mind when you're smoking or drinking something. Just because you're bought into the hype and you're aware of what you're uh, smoking or drinking should be really good because of the price, that doesn't always mean you're gonna get more enjoyment out of it. So it's about finding those hidden gems that are available and that are not overly expensive. So with that said, guys, let's go ahead and get to this list. Um, I really tried to leave uh, a good you know, mix of spirits. So we got some peated single malt scotch from Isla. We've got a rice rye uh, cast strength from California, really good stuff and three bourbons from America. So let's get this video started. This, this is all about fragrance, drinks, and cigar pairing, and it was a requested video from a reviewer. And this is something that, I tell you what, you could probably put any of these cigars in any fragrance with any of these whiskeys and you'd be all right. The main fragrances that I chose for this are fragrances that are not gonna interfere much with the smell and the taste of what you're drinking and smoking. So. With that said guys, one of the best standard bourbons you can get, it's a barrel proof from Wild Turkey. This is rare breed. Anything here, whether it's the Bon Dubai Gold, Argos Triumph Abacus, or even the Royal Tobacco from Amouage would go great with these three bourbons. You know, you got Russell's Reserve, which are the same people that make Wild Turkey. This is a little bit of a step up from rare breed. This is their single barrel, non-chill filtered, about 10 years old. And then 1792 Full Proof, which is a distillery at Barton Distillery. And this is a cast strength whiskey as well. Any of these fragrances are gonna go great with it. The main thing is with the notes, and I've done this with Wall Street before and absolutely ruined a night out. Not really in terms of ruining the actual night itself, but in terms of the experience of what I was tasting and smoking. Wall Street was just too heavy and marine of a fragrance to go well with these bourbons. It's very green, very salty, just doesn't mix well. So you got Triumph Abacus, it's sweet, boozy. You got the saffron in there, tobacco, green apple, peach, tonka bean, just beautiful stuff. Bond number nine, Dubai Gold. It's got the brandy note at the top, again, saffron. So it's just really, really wonderful. It goes great with any of these drinks. It's got a nice creamy, sweet, musky base with a little bit of ginger and bitter orange in there. And of course, Amouage Royal Tobacco. Amage Royal Tobacco is one of my favorite fragrances. It's got a, you know, fir balsam in there. It's got, you know, Madagascar vanilla, rich incense. Of course, the tobacco notes, just a very beautiful, strong, sweet, uh, complex tobacco fragrance. And if we're gonna go over the cigars, all these are some that you can find. Some are more limited than others. This is a Arturo Fuente Opus X. And Carlito Fuente is actually the one who came up with this blend in the mid 90s. Another thing you may not know about Cuban cigars, and uh, you know, I realize that this is not a tutorial on cigars, but I think it's important people know that the original Cuban tobacco 
those are pretty much gone. There is a mold issue in the mid 90s, 1995 to 96, and a lot of the original Cuban tobacco seeds and plants, they had to switch over because they were having mold issues. And the Fuente and Padrones, before they left Cuba, um, this is much longer before the, the 90s, um, they took some of the original tobacco seeds from Cuba with them to Nicaragua and to the Dominican, uh, Padron from Nicaragua and the Fuentes to the Dominican. Um, so a lot of the Fuentes and the Padrones that we have today, some of those are actually from the original Cuban seed tobacco because it's a little bit drier in those areas in comparison to the microclimate of Cuba. So that's something not a lot of people know. Cuban cigars are not exactly what they used to be, albeit they are still very good, just overpriced. The original Cuban tobacco, for the most part, has been lost, and the, the Cuban tobacco before 1995-96 is much different than what they have now. So, another cigar, Ashton Virgin Sun Grown, another Fuente product, very good. It's a little spicy, a little leathery, and it goes great with these fragrances, great with these bourbons, very nice for a night out. It's one of those things to where you could probably, again, mix a lot of these in together, but all these fragrances you're safe with and they're not gonna interfere with your, your drinking or your smoking experience. So, another great cigar that I have, this is one from Davidoff. It's called the Churchill Late Hour, a little bit limited, kind of like the Opus X, but the thing that people don't realize with Davidoff is they used to be particularly a Cuban brand, and I believe it was 1992 where they picked up and they moved to the Dominican Republic due to some of the issues that were going on in Cuba. So Davidoff is a Cuban company. They moved to Dominican Republic and actually made it a very seamless transition. So that was very good on Davidoff. They have extremely high quality control. They get a lot of hate because yes, they are overpriced for what they are, but now that you see them in Davidoff in London, um, Geneva as well, I think is their, one of their flagship stores in Switzerland. But if you do get the chance, the Davidoff cigars are very, very good. They're, most of them are actually very mild. I can already tell you um, from the wrapper and having smelt this, uh, having a friend smoke this and him recommend it to me, it seems like it's gonna be more medium to full body, which I like. I haven't tried anything like that from Davidoff yet. So I know that's gonna be a great combination with Royal Tobacco and some of these here. Now we got Redwood Empire. This is a rye whiskey, cast strength. I do like most of my whiskeys cast strength. It's more genuine, it's more authentic. It's straight from the barrel. And then if it's too strong to my liking, then I'll add my own water to it. I don't want the distillery to add water to it for me. I don't wanna pay for water. And that's why I like Eau de Parfum, Parfum and the extrates as opposed to you know, cologne and EDTs, because at the end of the day, you're not paying for the oils, you're paying for water and alcohol. And same thing with the strength of the whiskeys. You want to try to get them at cast strength, in my opinion, try the real deal. And if it's too strong, I'll add a little bit of ice or water and bring it down and proof to your liking. But don't let the distillery do that for you. So another great cigar and a great mix. And these are going to be more specific to the two Isla scotches here which we have Ardbeg Ugadal, which is a sherry scotch, very peaty. This is like Christmas cake and a barbecue on a beach. It's the best way I can describe it. Great whiskey. People who know about this know it already has a cult following. You're gonna either gonna love it or you're hate it. And that kind of goes with any peated scotch in general. Same with the Lagavulin 12 year old special release. I'm not a fan of Lagavulin or the distillery for the most part, except for these types of releases because Lagavulin chill filters their whiskey, which means they freeze it and they run it through a filter and it strips away all the mouthfeel and the natural fatty acids and oils in it. And they do that for presentation purposes, which is, I don't have anything good to say about that. And they also are guilty of putting artificial coloring in their scotch, which I think they've finally gotten away, of, away from. I'm not sure if that's true, but this particular bottling is non-chill filtered. It is cast strength and it has no coloring added to it, which bourbon by law cannot um, some scotches do it, although most have gotten away from it because they've been called out by the information age and the people that know. Um, they get blasted on the forums and they get all sorts of mean emails and letters. So eventually, due to customer pressure, a lot of the scotch distilleries have just stopped doing that because they don't want to be caught in that game. Um, not a good game to be caught in. So great cigar and fragrance to go with these two Isla peated scotches. This is the Padron 90 from the 1926 series. Now the 1926 has the 80 year anniversary, which is like a perfecto shape. Again, one of my favorite cigars from the new world that's not a Cuban. And it's relatively reasonably priced compared to 
again, some of the higher end Cubans, you're looking at about $30 a cigar, but this is the uh, Padron 90 Maduro. Wonderful cigar, a little bit full bodied, but you know, certainly aged well and has a lot of earthy cocoa and coffee notes to it. Um, but great, great cigar with these, uh, these two Islas and the fragrance that you're gonna wanna pair with that. Would you, be, you would be safe with a Mage, a Mage Royal Tobacco as well, but I think Boundless goes a little bit better because it's got some freshness in there and it's got a little bit more smokiness to it in terms of that tobacco quality. I don't really find a lot of smoke in the Amouage Royal Tobacco, which is perfectly fine with me. Uh, I do appreciate that they're different. So Boundless being a little bit smokier and a little fresher with that blood orange at the top. That's a great pairing with these two Isla Scotches and the Padron 90. So guys, put some of your favorite drink and cigar and fragrance combinations down below. There's no right answer to this. These are just some things that I have found go very well together and these are some things from my personal collection. All these fragrances that I chose probably could be, you know, be interchanged. It's not something that, yes, this goes with this drink and this cigar, but for the most part, I would say that for the bourbons here, you're gonna be best off with uh, Bond Number no. 9 Gold and Triumph of Bacchus from Argos and pairing those with the Fuente Opus X and the Ashton DSG. Great combination, can't go wrong. And then with the rye, because it's a little spicier and stronger, maybe doing it with the uh, Davidoff Late Hour Churchill and that nice and kind of spicy Amouage Moral Tobacco where it's got the fur balsam, incense, vanilla, tobacco, just wonderful fragrance. You know, they got a laundry list of ingredients in here. It's got a slightly licorice uh, smell to it, like a slight black licorice and anise smell as well to roll tobacco. So perfect with the rye. If anyone's ever bitten into actual rye, like in a rye bread, you get that. And that's why that's, in my opinion, just a great combination. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, this isn't going to be something regular in the channel. This was a subscriber requested episode. and He was kind of tugging at my heartstrings with this. So Mr. Barrow, uh, Barrow, thank you so much. I'm I think it's Mr. Barrow 100 who um, requested this. So thank you so much. Something that I really enjoy doing. Uh, won't be the last time I do it on the channel, but again, this is a fragrance channel, but fragrances, much like cigars and fine spirits, they, do, they go together with an occasion. And that's kind of the point of this is if you're looking for something, you have a wedding or a birthday coming up or your kid's birthday, graduation, promotion, you know, some sort of life accomplishment, I think any of these fragrances with these drink and cigar pairings will be in for a memorable night. So guys, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Again, like and subscribe, it really does help the channel grow. It's something that, you know, I love my viewers and how genuine they are in the comments. I love the fact that my channel does seem to have organic growth. It's not, you know, a bot farm or anything like that, which some channels, you look at the amount of subscribers they have, and then you look at the amount of engagement on their content. And there's a very large disconnect and you just have to wonder if their followers are actually organic or not. So guys, I appreciate you. I hope you have a great weekend. This is a wonderful video for a Friday as well. So if you're getting off work early, maybe go to the store and grab some of these and uh, let me know how you like it in the comments. Guys, until next time, have a great weekend. Bye.